Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. This is the second of three parts about kidney failure. Again, a disclaimer that I am a doctor, but I am not your doctor. If you have any concerns that you have a medical condition, you should speak to your personal physician. Additionally, I am not a nephrologist. I'm not a kidney doctor. I deal with kidney disease a lot in the intensive care unit, and I am board certified in internal medicine but there are a lot of finer details about kidney disease that I will not go into in this video because this is more geared towards a general public audience rather than medical students who need to know the details about the kidneys. So again, just to review, the purpose of the kidneys is to help filter out the blood, eliminate waste, remove excess fluid from the body, help with acid-base balance, management of electrolytes, in addition to helping with red blood cell production, bone health, and blood pressure management. In my prior video, I talked about chronic kidney disease. Today, we're gonna to talk about acute kidney injury. This is a kidney disorder that happens very quickly, usually in hours to days, and it can happen to somebody who has a 100% healthy kidney going into it or somebody who already has chronic kidney disease. So that would be acute on chronic kidney disease. So when I'm speaking about this today, I'm covering both because both are a type of acute kidney injury. Like I said earlier, acute kidney injury or AKI is a very common ICU diagnosis. There are multiple reasons why someone may have acute kidney injury. One of the most common that I see in the intensive care unit is low blood pressure or circulatory shock. This causes decreased perfusion to the kidneys. So if the kidneys are not getting enough blood, oxygen, and nutrients to do their appropriate function, then they'll suffer some damage. Another cause is dehydration or intravascular depletion. This is when you don't have enough fluid or plasma volume in your blood. This might happen if somebody runs a marathon and doesn't hydrate at all. Somebody who's rounding on the medical wards and doesn't drink water all day. Dehydration is a cause of acute kidney injury. Certain medications can cause kidney injury a lot of times this might happen concurrently if somebody is dehydrated and they're taking a medication that can injure the kidney. It just adds fuel to the fire. Some examples of medications that can cause this are NSAIDs like ibuprofen, naproxen, certain antibiotics like vancomycin or aminoglycosides, certain blood pressure medications such as ACE inhibitors or ARBs. And again, these, these medications don't always cause acute kidney injury, but sometimes in the right scenario, somebody's kidneys might be more predisposed to having injury from taking these medications. If somebody takes these medications at a higher dose, then they are more likely to have kidney injury since they do work directly on the kidney. A very common phrase around the wards is the dose makes the poison. There are some herbal supplements and dietary supplements that can cause kidney injury as well. And again, some of these are at high doses. Creatine is very commonly used by people who are trying to increase body mass. At high doses, this can injure the kidneys. Vitamin D at high doses can be toxic to the kidneys as well. High doses of green tea extract. Some other supplements that may injure the kidneys as well or ephedra and aloe vera. The contrast dye that we give in the hospital for studies such as a CAT scan or an angiography, a cardiac cath, can injure the kidneys and cause something called contrast-induced nephropathy. This is a controversial topic among nephrologists because there are some nephrologists that do not believe this happens, and there are others that are very adamant about contrast-induced nephropathy being an actual medical condition. But if we have somebody who has chronic kidney disease, we definitely weigh the risk and benefit of them getting a contrast study while they're in the intensive care unit. There have been some studies that show that giving some fluid prior to the contrast load may prevent further injury to the kidneys. This is a controversial topic in the medical world of whether it exists or not, and the management is also controversial. But we do absolutely consider if somebody has severe acute kidney injury or later stage CKD and needs to go for a contrast study. At the end of the day, if the contrast study is a life-saving procedure, such as somebody who 
needs a cardiac catheterization for a heart attack that they may die from, then we are willing to sacrifice the kidneys, which the nephrologists do not like us saying. But sometimes you need to look at the risk and benefit. If the benefit is living and the risk is having further injury to the kidney, then we can always offer dialysis. But again, this is a very complex medical decision and it usually involves multiple physicians deciding what's the best thing to do for this patient at this time. As I said in my prior video, pyelonephritis can cause kidney injury. So it does cause acute kidney injury. That can lead to scarring and lasting kidney damage. The patient can have acute kidney injury. And then after they recover from that, have CKD. If the tubes leading out of the kidneys are blocked, most likely due from a kidney stone. But it can also be blocked by a mass, a tumor, anything or anything extrinsically pushing on the tube, then that can cause acute kidney injury. A lot of times if one of the tubes is blocked and the other one's working, then you have a less likely chance of having acute kidney injury because you still have a functional kidney and it may compensate. If both of the tubes are blocked or if one of them is just very severely blocked, then it can lead to acute kidney injury. And finally, any traumatic injury to the kidney, such as if somebody's in a motor vehicle accident and has blunt trauma to the flanks kidney area, then they are at they are at risk of having AKI. So what are the symptoms of AKI? Like CKD, this can vary based on the degree of kidney injury, and it also may be asymptomatic. But somebody who has severe acute kidney injury might be nauseated, fatigued, have swelling because they're not able to release water. They may also become confused. They might have muscle cramps from the electrolyte disturbances, and they may also have trouble breathing. Something we look at closely in the intensive care unit is how much urine a patient is putting out. We measure it every single hour. So if we notice that somebody's urine output is dropping off over several hours, then we begin to get concerned, and then we start preemptively treating for acute kidney injury. Of course, we also monitor the metabolic panel, the creatinine, and the electrolytes. And we also look at their acid-base status because acute kidney injury can cause acid buildup in the blood, which is very, very dangerous. The treatment of acute kidney injury depends on the cause. If somebody is dehydrated, then we give them fluid. A lot of times we do give fluids to people with acute kidney injury because as a nephrologist who taught my med school class said, a wet kidney is a happy kidney. We monitor their electrolytes such as their potassium, their phosphorus, sodium to see if there's any abnormalities there. If the potassium gets very high, we do give a cocktail of certain medications to help lower the potassium and eliminate it from the body. There are several different medications that we use. The most common tactic is giving insulin and dextrose. So the insulin pushes the potassium into the cell and the dextrose is so the insulin doesn't cause the blood sugar to drop. So we give someone a sugar bolus with their insulin. We also might give a diuretic to help eliminate potassium that way or a medication that helps eliminate potassium through the GI tract. If somebody appears to have a high level of acid in their blood, We'll give them IV fluids and we might also give them a medication called sodium bicarbonate that helps buffer that acid. That's a very temporizing measure, but sometimes that buys us time while we're trying to stabilize a patient. Of course, we make any medication adjustments we need to if somebody is getting a medication that might cause further kidney damage, we'll either dose it accordingly. There are certain dosing parameters for people with renal dysfunction or we may discontinue the medication altogether. If somebody's acute kidney injury is severe enough, if it's causing very high acid levels that we're having a hard time controlling, if their potassium gets very high and we're not able to control with the cocktail I mentioned before, we might have to consider emergent dialysis. Typically in the intensive care unit, we do continuous dialysis or CRRT. This is a form of hemodialysis. So the blood is put through a machine that acts as the kidney and filters the blood. In order to do this, we need to place a temporary dialysis catheter. This is typically placed in the internal jugular vein or the femoral vein. As a patient gets better, their renal function may improve or recover. So we continue to monitor somebody's urine output 
even if they've stopped making urine for a couple days. It's very challenging to predict who's going to have renal recovery and who is not. There are times when somebody will go on dialysis in the intensive care unit and they'll only need it for a couple days or a couple weeks and then they're able to come off of it. But if somebody looks like they have progressed and they now have end-stage renal disease, we discuss putting in a tunneled line as opposed to the temporary catheter just so once they leave the hospital, they'll have access for dialysis while they discuss with their doctor whether or not they need a fistula. So fistula is what people with long-term hemodialysis have, but this takes multiple months to mature and be usable. I hope you enjoyed this video about acute kidney injury. Again, this is the second of three videos about kidney failure. Next week's video is about end-stage renal disease, and I'll specifically be discussing the types of dialysis and renal transplant in general. Let me know which organ system you want to hear about next since we're finishing up with the kidneys. If you enjoy this content, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next week.